right, welcome back. Eagle Dynamics released 2.8.0.32937 open beta on Thursday. We're going to go over some of the fixes for the F-16 and then we're going to check out the South Atlantic map because there was a huge update to this map. So we're going to check all that out and uh, check the lighting. There's, there's quite a few things I want to look at. So let's get started. First thing, tail numbers. Fixed tail numbers on the zero and one level of details, unable to set in ME or in game. Uh, I don't know if a few of you probably noticed. I noticed right away, you cannot, could not change your tail number uh, either in here or in uh, the uh, reload screen. So go in here and change the, now yeah, look at that. Good to go. Next, engine control switch, sec. So down here on the left, Right behind the JFS Start 2 switch, you can just click on this red guard that'll lift it, and then this is the control switch. You can go to secondary or primary. When we flip it to sec, nozzle will close, RPMs will drop just a little bit. Open up that nozzle, there it is, and the RPMs go back up. All right, that looks okay. I'm not sure about the numbers, I'd have to check that. All right, we're outside, we're gonna check out the visual see if it actually closes. All right, sec check, here we go, sec. Holy cow. Okay, so that is really fast. I don't think I've ever seen a nozzle move that fast. That seems a little fast too when you go back to pry. But that's that's just outrageously fast. I've never seen one that fast. So here's a comparison in real life. And sick. Yeah, that is really quick. That's almost instant. I've never seen a nozzle work that quick, so I, I don't think that's right. I, I don't remember it working that quick. Moving on, incorrect behavior after off HMD. I'm not sure what that means, so if we uh, turn our, our GMX on, there we go, and uh, let's move this down. All right, so it's off, on. I don't know, this is the way it's always worked. I'm not really sure what that means. If you know, uh, let us know in the comments below. Guard frequency doesn't show on frequency indicators. So I'm not sure what that means either. We've got the DED showing the frequencies that we, oh, that we have here, 305 and 127. And then we also have down here, we can set it to both, or main both and ADF. Um, I'm assuming that means here, I'm not, I'm not sure. If you know, let me know in the comments below. Unable to bore sight multiple Mavericks without TGP. All right, so let's uh, remove the TGP. Request refueling. Request Copy. rearming. Copy. All right, you can see we've got no targeting pod. I've got a couple Mavericks here. All right, we're gonna power up the Mavericks. All right, so I'm not really sure what they mean by uh, bore sight multiple Mavericks without the TGP. I've always bore sighted them with the TGP to, you know, to bore sight them to the TGP. So whatever the targeting pod's looking at, the Mavericks looking at, um, I've never bore sighted to anything else. So I'm not really sure what that means. Um, we can check the HUD, see if it's doing that. So we'll move the RDR cursor switch to move the box. TMS up to put it in place and then you can see the Maverick circle isn't quite looking at the box so we'll move it to the box and TMS up and then we'll BSGT it all right and so now if I move the box uh, back to the center and I'll just move it over to this little box here TMS up and it's still not quite so I'm not really sure if maybe I'm doing something wrong or uh, or what they mean by that I've always done it with a targeting pod so if you know let us know in the comments below all right auto locking target 
in ACM mode from 30 miles, which shouldn't be possible. So let's find a target here. There's one right there, 40 miles away. We're gonna wait till we're about 30 miles, and then we'll switch to ACM mode. That's about right. Let's go to ACM and start scanning. I'm not getting a lock. It's good. Lock. There's a lock at around 10 miles. All right. Let's switch to dogfight. Lock. ACM in Himix. Uh, ellipse should disappear once the lock is made. Lock. There we go. Box two. Looking good. All right, moving on. Air ground radar in ground moving target mode. Uh, azimuth change decreased scan velocity, so we can go to GMT is ground moving target mode. And we already have a ground moving target, check that out. And change in azimuth. Decreased scan velocity. So faster, slower. I'm guessing that's what they mean. That looks good. All right, these two I have been waiting on for a while. Uh, one of which we've been waiting on ever since the Maverick came out for the 16. Uh, so let's get to it. So the FCR now syncs with the targeting pod. So let's bring up the targeting pod. And we are in air to ground radar. Let's switch this to GMT, which is ground moving target. Let's go to 40 miles. And there is a ground moving target right there. You see a little white square. As soon as you see that, you can go and lock it, TMS up to lock. But uh, what I wanted to see is the FCR is sinking with the targeting pod. This is great. It's awesome. So let's lock onto a ground target. And now we should be looking directly at it. Sure enough, there we are. So let's swap and we're going to move on to the next test and put this into primo this is our mavericks altitude. Altitude. dms down to sync it with the targeting pod let's go over here to the targeting pod dms down to make it soy we're going to make turn it into auto mode here let's tms left to change it to black hot we're going to pick a target here so there, let's do a uh, white hot. Uh, up our contrast. Move into range here. There we go, we got a lock. So now we're gonna look over here at our uh, uh, Mavericks, TMS right. And it should hand off if we're in range. We're not in range, so let's get a little closer. Once we have that car uh, carrot inside the bracket, we'll be in range of the Mavericks, which we are now. So we've got point track on the target, TMS right, and it's got a lock. I didn't have to do anything but TMS right. Let's go ahead and fire that, so rifle. Let's move to the next target. Got it. Automatically, look at that, the second target, rifle. Automatically, I didn't have to do anything. Rifle, just move to the second, fourth target. Automatically, rifle, check that out. Oh, awesome. Great. All right, next. All right, ED has made good on their promise to start making electronic warfare more of a thing in DCS as time goes on this year. And they removed the ability to see jamming targets on the HSD even if you have AWACS in the air. So this is gonna make it a little harder for you to see targets and where they are. You know that they're out there, 
but you don't know where. So this is great. This is going to make uh, electronic warfare more of a thing and make DCS a little bit more challenging uh, with ECM pods in the mix. Mode 4 IFF scan indicates accurate azimuth and range that's been removed. TMS left short as a scan and I get nothing. So that's it for the updates of note for the 16. I'm going to move on to the South Atlantic map. They got quite a few updates. There are a couple other things for the 16 that had been added, um, and I would point you to Matt Wagner's overview of that. Uh, link in the description below. Moving on to the South Atlantic map updates. Rasbam has added new airfields to the South Atlantic map. They have updated lighting components to support the 2.8 releases in the new lighting system. The new normal maps previously pushed are now enabled for the entire map. Uh, there is a known issue though, normal maps cause a discoloration around the Falkland Island cliffs areas in certain parts. Added gauss bushes, I may have pronounced that wrong, across the Falkland Islands. Started detailing out the farms in the Falklands, still a work in progress. New towns and villages around new airfields. Improved video memory usage, which should improve performance across the map. Existing towns around the airfields have been tweaked for a better look. Added new detailing models for surfaces in a few places. Not sure where those are. Uh, there's no notes on that. Resolved forum reported surface triangulation around the Falkland Islands. I'm not sure where that is. Changed the color of all of the tracks across the map to be more in keeping with the region. Updated the vegetation maps for three quarters of the map, still a work in progress. Fleshed out Rio Gallegos refueling terminal. and they refine the railway line from this terminal. Detailed maps for the low level terrain have been improved for the whole map. Now you can actually see this when you first load into the map. You'll see the different levels of detail load in and it gets really detailed. It's looking really good. They replaced primary and secondary road surface textures across the map. Various new models across the map, which include, but are not limited to, new shipping container models, and new gas storage tank models. And of course, they introduced lighting variations across the map for a more realistic look, and updated the lighting components to support the new 2.8 release that we see in the Persian Gulf. Uh, from what I can tell, the only lights that I can see that seem to be different are just like the Persian Gulf, the street lights and the ramp floodlights. The terminal lights still don't seem to affect the ground or the models, and there are still some flat lighting in the cities, but the uh, street lamps do help quite a bit. It's looking a lot better. So I hope this answers some questions about some of the updates that came out with the latest 2.8 update. And I'm happy to see all these improvements on the South Atlantic map. The lighting looks a lot better than it did before at night. Um, and the street lamps are obviously a great addition. Uh, same effects as it was in Persian Gulf with the original 2.8 uh, launch. So it's great to see it start to spread across the different maps. Hopefully this goes across all maps very soon. All right. See you guys in the next one.